his own brother, Charles, basically upbraided John and says, don't you know that ordination means separation? And perhaps John knew that, but was ready to let the movement go forward uh, and see if he could still remain uh, uh, in authority through the auspices of um, Thomas Koch. Even if Charles and John finally saw that ordination equals separation, uh, there was still a hope that they could uh, exercise control over the issues, but that was not to be because as Koch arrives in America uh, and meets uh, here in Frederica, Maryland, Barrett's Chapel, the chapel itself formed in 1780, Francis Asbury meets Thomas Koch here in uh, 1784, November. Uh, and a couple of events occur that are, are very important in terms of um, how we conduct polity today. Most notably, uh, when Koch arrived, uh, Asbury meets him at Barrett's Chapel. And you can see here the map of uh, Maryland, uh, south of Dover, mm, about 12 miles is Barrett's Chapel. It stands today. And uh, we will talk about uh, Barrett's Chapel. Francis Asbury is not aware of the uh, plans, and, is at, and it is at Barrett's Chapel that Thomas Koch unveils uh, the plan for an independent America with superintendents, or as he's already calling himself, bishops, with um, Francis Asbury to be the co-superintendent. Uh, co they meet in November 1784, and Asbury writes in his own diary that he was shocked when Thomas Koch unveiled the plans here in Kent County, Delaware. Plans were laid here at Barrett's Chapel, often known as the Cradle of American Methodism. Plans were laid uh, for uh, a conference to be held in a month. And something very interesting happens here. Uh, Asbury, uh, after celebrating the sacraments uh, for the first time, Koch celebrates the sacraments here, the first legal <laughs> celebration of sacraments. Um, and I want to show you here in Barrett's Chapel, this is the, uh, the website that is put out by Barrett's Chapel today, and here's a picture of the interior. They have a little star on the floor here uh, where Asbury and Koch actually met and embraced for the first time. And as they celebrate uh, the sacraments there for the first time, Asbury begins to see that uh, power and authority is flowing from Wesley through Koch and that uh, this doesn't fit well with the new uh, democratic sensibilities for the preachers who have survived going through the uh, going through the American Revolution. And so Asbury indicates that um, he will not agree to the plan he will not agree to be superintendent of the preachers without the preachers voting in conference uh, in a democratic majority fashion to ratify his consecration, his ordination and consecration uh, in, that, in that order to superintendency. And thus the democratic impulses that uh, Asbury holds and, and, and uh, applies to the new polity is, is a precedent-setting notion uh, to seek the order of the preacher's approval in conference to structure and to uh, elect bishops has been a, a polity uh, feature of Methodism ever since. It is the, the order of preachers that create the elders, which is of course consistent with Wesley's notion that it is the elder that is the ministry order and bishops are just elders set aside or perhaps put a put a, 
above as supervisors in, in a separate office for missional ministry. Well, that was consistent with Wesley's theology, but I think in terms of the way Asbury was looking at it at uh, Barrett's Chapel, it was more an attempt to create and preserve the power of the indigenous preachers and his own authority as one who'd earned the right to serve in America, uh, culturally sensitive to the American democratic experience that is emerging uh, than a rigorous a theological <laughs> exploration of how the office of bishop comes uh, and is cert and is provided by the order of the elders. But there's a certain theological logic there uh, if you take Wesley's logic for ordination and uh, Episcopal cons uh, consecration seriously. And, and there are those within the body of Christ worldwide that do not accept our our arguments uh, for, for ordination based on missional expediency. But nevertheless, Barrett's Chapel is an important milestone uh, in which bishops are elected by the body of preachers and in effect Wesleyan authority through Coke is not going to simply be a, a rubber stamp. And really, in that regard, Barrett's Chapel is the cradle of American Methodism with its democratic uh, uh, selection of the episcopacy rather than the apostolic succession of laying on of, of hands. So, between that time at Barrett's Chapel, and of course you can see Barrett's Chapel Today, it is, uh, if you look on our Google Earth site, uh, we have a lot of material there. And uh, the General Commission on Archives and History has labeled it a National Historic Site. And you can visit that at the General Commission on Archives and History. We won't have time to do that uh, today, but take some time to look at the material there. Francis Asbury, in a further attempt to show his sensitivity to the power of the preachers on the ground assigns Coke to go in the next month and itinerate throughout Baltimore and the Maryland uh, and Delaware area uh, to see the preachers at work and a Christmas conference to be held uh, Christmas Eve uh, in Baltimore is is put uh, is put in in place Asbury calls Freeborn Garretson, whom we met last time, and Henry Hosier, an African-American preacher that we'll meet also in some depth, uh, charges them to ride throughout the connection, inviting all the, all the uh, preachers to Baltimore for the Christmas Eve conference. In between that time, there's one last attempt by Coke. Uh, meeting in the Perry Hall area here, just north of Baltimore, uh, at the Henry uh, Goff House, uh, a, a newly converted wealthy Methodist who owns Perry Hall uh, Mansion. Uh, Coke and Asbury meet there, and Coke, according to Russ Ritchie, uh, through the minutes, tries to again put a more authoritarian Wesleyan stamp upon the new church as it's coming to be formed in Baltimore uh, and it's not to be. So Barrett, uh, Barrett's Chapel trumps Perry Hall, the indigenous preachers uh, trump Perry Hall. The Christmas conference is held in Baltimore. The lovely Lane Chapel we no longer have the Lovely Lane Chapel. It's at 206 East Redwood Street. It's been built up today. That congregation has moved northward and there's a lovely Lane Museum at that conference. But you can see here that uh, the Christmas conference is held uh, right near the historic center of Baltimore uh, beginning Christmas Eve. At the Christmas conference Methodism moves quickly to uh, 
to set in place the episcopacy. In fact, the first order of the business is Thomas Coke preaches an episcopal sermon, um, attempts to uh, open the conference by uh, explaining scripturally to the body of American preachers, which was 81 at the time, um, what an Episcopal leader would be. Um, and in so doing, very soon after the title for the new independent church is selected, the Methodist Episcopal Church in, in America. We have Thomas Koch's own, remin own reminiscence uh, of, the, of the Christmas conference. Uh, or orders of elders were elected uh, Freeborn Garretson is ordained elder and sent to Nova Scotia, uh, a list of those uh, elders. Uh, curiously, William Waters not not among them. Uh, but nevertheless, um, he saw a lot of harmony there in the uh, in the meeting, but that's because Asbury had, through his creation of uh, the body of preachers sitting in democratic, uh, uh, elective form had solidified his his power, and uh, at Lovely Lane Chapel, December twenty fourth, uh, we begin to see uh, the laying on of hands and three day consecration pattern. Uh, Francis Asbury is uh, ordained deacon uh, on one day lets it sit a little bit. Uh, I guess it takes some time to get through the bloodstream. The next day he's ordained elder through the laying on of hands and then finally uh, he is ordained in an irregular way. It's not consistent with the consecration theology of the bishops but nonetheless on December 27th. You have Thomas Coke, uh, Watcote and Vasey and another man Philip William Otterbein of the German Reformed Church, friend of Asbury fellow pietist and founder of the United Brethren Church, whom uh, we will rejoin in 1968. But you see here at ground zero of um, uh, the Methodist Episcopal Church in America, we have uh, uh, an Episcopal government and um, democratic governance. At this conference, A number of proceedings were uh, ratified. The MEC, Methodist Episcopal Church in America, formed. Uh, the minutes of that Christmas conference were gathered a year later, published in Philadelphia as the first Methodist discipline. Conference adopted the following uh, standards. They took the 39 articles of uh, the Church of England abridged them down to 24, and then added uh, 25th uh, that the Methodist Episcopal Church in America would be loyal to its government, sort of a compensation or overcompensation for the view that they were um, British uh, loyalists. They took the American Sunday service, the abridgment of the Book of Common Prayer that was revised by Wesley, but um, uh, let it be known that they preferred the extemporaneous prayers than to liturgical uh, reading of prayers. Wesley's sermons and notes on the New Testament were adopted as, as doctrinal standards, which we still have today. And at the time, the polity of the British large minutes, uh, the British polity discipline were, were given, but uh, latitude, freedom was given to adopt them. And a binding minute was put in, in the records that uh, as far as was consistent with Methodism in America, Methodists in America would remain loyal to, to John Wesley. That was put aside in two years, and basically you've got the adolescent church moving forward. The democratic structures of electing bishops was put into place, and a strong censure on, on uh, anti-slavery, uh, uh, that slavery, uh, slaves must be manumitted by a certain amount of time, were also included in that first, that first uh, discipline in America. And so we have the founding of the Methodist Episcopal Church in America, December 1784, an American Revolution, 
uh, emerges with an American church and uh, more democratic indigenous uh, leadership patterns uh, of worship and governance going forward. Which